Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. It's been quite a while since I've uploaded a video. In fact, I think it's been about two months since I uh, put something here up on the channel. Uh, the last video was actually an update on the very first contact instrument that I uh, you know, had been working on. And this is it here. Uh, this is um, in that video kind of what I'd put together and I was real proud of it. It was really cool. And uh, I thought I would do another video update, sort of a devlog type thing. And um, for the record, you know, I don't have any computer coding background, so I don't actually know what a devlog is. <laughs> but um, I imagine it's just, uh, you know, logging where I'm at at this particular time. Uh, and so uh, when I had put this uh, last video up, you know, I think I'd been scripting in contact for maybe two months or so. I think I started in early November. So um, yeah, I didn't really start doing stuff until December. And anyway, I, I you know, I thought that this was so good at the time. And um, well, you know, a couple more months have passed and this here is old news. And um, yeah, I just wanted to share my new version of uh, the cinematic contact instruments. Um, uh, again, so Cinematic is the name of the sound library uh, by this company here, Soundmorph. They've got a ton of amazing sound libraries. Cinematic um, happens to be one of my favorites. I use it quite a bit in the music that I write. Uh, and so I thought this would be a really good library of sounds to build my first instrument with. Uh, and again, this was good for where I was at. Uh, but again, a couple months later, take a look at this. Um, it's much more refined, that's for sure. Uh, so in the cinematic uh, sound library uh, from Soundmorph, you actually get a bank of designed sounds that the folks at Soundmorph have uh, designed themselves. Um, uh, but you also get the source recordings that they used to create all of the designed effects, which is just super cool. Uh, again, I'm pretty sure they do that with all their libraries. Um, definitely check it out, soundmorph.com. And for the record, I'm not paid by them or anything like that. I just really dig their, their products. Uh, so with this one, with uh, Cinematic V2, this is my new one. I've been grinding away at this for quite some time. I took a step back from that first version and really thought hard about what it should be. And so I reapproached the second one from the ground up. So I, I started this with a completely new script. Um, I've gotten a lot better at Photoshop as well, uh, which is part of the look of this thing. Uh, so I did some uh, some more work on the graphics and, and all that, which is still of the entire thing, probably what I'm the most dissatisfied with is the graphics. And that's simply because I'm not a graphic designer, um, but I'm doing my best, you know, as, as I continue along this journey here. Uh, so we've got the design sounds, the source sounds, and I also enabled... Uh, a reverse function in this particular instrument uh, so that the sounds can be played in reverse because I want this to be a sound design tool more than like a musical instrument. Uh, so, you know, the idea is to give quick access to a lot of useful functionality uh, to anyone who wants to put together some sound design ideas real quick. Um, so reverse works for the design and the source groups. We've got the fun uh, animated uh, cassette reels from the logo. We've got the ADSR controls for each of the, the groups, which pertain to, you know, the key switches down here. Uh, we've got the, the waveform control that's, that updates and all that good stuff. Uh, we've also got the much better offset slider as well. Uh, so you'll notice the start flag actually moves with the slider. One of the things I want to try and figure out how to do is how to grab the flag itself and move it, but I'm, I haven't quite figured that out. And I'm pretty happy with where it is. So uh, for now, the offset slider will do. Uh, then I've also figured out how to, uh, with the help of some of the guys on the contact scripting forums, I learned how to have the labels uh, update with the value and then revert back to the actual label, which is, I think, a lot classier <laughs> than the way I was doing it before. Um, Right now, the mod button doesn't do anything, uh, but that'll be coming here pretty soon. Uh, and then I've been working really hard on the effects section. So um, before, I had it so that it was just uh, like the effects were in a set order. Uh, but if this is going to be a proper sound design tool, you know, the user needs to be able to uh, order the, the effects in whichever way they choose. So I've got eight different uh, insert effects that are 
uh, on a per group basis. So every single group that you can select, like every bank of sounds, can have their own insert effect chain. So you know we can insert a filter on slot number one, compressor on slot number two, and then maybe on slot number six, for some reason, we want some distortion, and then we're gonna level it out with another compressor or something like that. So you could do that. Um, and then you can go in and, you know, change up your values. And if you don't like what that is, and you know, you wanna reset it, the C button over here resets the values to their default, which I think is super cool. Uh, and then we can hit the close button to go out and either select a different effect, or if we want to close out the entire effect chain, the C button clears out the entire chain to reset the whole thing. The S and L buttons, as you might guess, uh, I have plans for a save and load function, which will allow the user to save their own values in there for later recall or their, if I can figure out how to do it, their own, um, you know, effects chain. So if there's, you know, if you have a particular order of effects that you like to use, you know, you could hit the load button after you save it and load that up. Uh, send effects are up top. We've got reverb, delay, uh, chorus, flanger, phaser, that type of stuff. And the same deal goes uh, for the, the send slots up here. Now, these are global. Those, these up here are not based on each group. Um, and that's simply because of the way that the internal contact engine is. Like, we can't, like, where I have the insert effects, we don't have access to the send effects uh, in those particular places. Um, but that's okay. You know, I, I think that this works really well for what I intend it to be. Um, and the same goes here where we've got a clear button to reset the values. And then if we come up here and we hit the clear button, it uh, clears out all of the effect slots as well. Um, I'm still, I'm kind of at a spot right now where I'm wondering if I want to do away with the key switches for selecting the groups um, because I'm having trouble getting these screens to update when I press different key switches. Um, so like, yeah, like that puts in a filter, but I don't think I had a filter loaded, you know. Um, so when I click around, there's just some weird stuff, some weird, weird bugs that are kind of going on and... Um, so it's got me wondering if I should do away with the key switches and put like a group select where the group name is, like in a menu. I'm not totally sure, um, but I'm at the point where I'm pretty happy with, with what it is. I thought I would go ahead and share an update um, on what I've been working on. Oh yeah, and then it's got a global utility section where we can invert the phase, swap the left right channels, affect stereo spread and pan, and it's got some liberty controls, um, pretty basic stuff that uh, again, I thought would be useful. As mentioned, I'm a little dissatisfied with the graphics. Like there's like, I don't know if you can really tell on screen, but it looks to me like on this one, like the little O inside there kind of shifts. And then uh, like, it's the same thing with the bypass button. Like for whatever reason, when I click it, the red looks like it's just ever so slightly to the left of the white little circle in there. And in Photoshop, it, the pixels all look the same to me. And I think that that's just um, sort of highlighting my um, inexperience with Photoshop and how to really make polished graphics. Because, you know, I look at this and I've done the best that I can currently do to make this look real slick and clean and modern and fun and inspiring to use. But there's just little details like that that are kind of just driving me crazy. And then I also want to replace... Um, some of the graphics, uh, like in one of these, I think it was up here in one of the send effects. Uh, let's see. Yeah, like delay, like I'm gonna swap out the ping pong switch uh, for like something that actually is a graphic instead of just like a contact switch. Um, same thing with the verb uh, to swap between the room and the hall um, settings. You know, I want to actually have uh, something that looks a little nicer than just the standard contact stuff. So there's some graphics to swap out in there. I've got some functionality to add with this whole save and load uh, user preset function that I want to have. And then the mod, I want to have some modulation controls in here. So like an LFO um, and then like an envelope, an ADSR envelope to affect some of the insert stuff. Uh, I, I Contact doesn't give me the, the uh, functionality to modulate the send effect stuff because of where I have these loaded up in 
the like the behind the scenes engine. Uh, but I do plan to at least add controls um, for some modulation in the uh, the insert effects. And I've got like a little slider and I, I kind of plan to do it sort of like Native Instruments does where you can select how much um, modulation you want to affect that particular control. And it'll have a little menu where you can select whether it's an LFO or an ADSR controlling everything. Still figuring out exactly what I want the mod menu to look like. Doing some work in Photoshop to kind of come up with that, um, you know, what that uh, window is going to look like and everything. Um, but I think it's at a shareable point uh, as far as making another video and just um, kind of showing off how far I've come. Uh, because this is a far cry from the version one cinematic instrument that I was working on. Um, so, yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed taking a look at this. Uh, I know that this is still kind of new to what I'm doing on the channel, making contact instruments and trying to create some really cool stuff in here. Um, but this is sort of the path that I'm uh, still wanting to go down. And uh, I, it's been really cool. I've had some conversations with um, just some people that have reached out because I've been sharing that I'm doing some of this and they're interested in making some instruments of their own and want some help and, and all that. So it's sort of starting to lead somewhere. It's definitely not paying the bills. <laughs> I've earned zero money from learning how to script and contact, uh, but I'm hoping that it will eventually lead somewhere. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Let me know, you know, in like some a sort of a sound design tool, like do key switches make sense? Would a menu make more sense? This is kind of where, you know, I'm going to start asking some of my friends for help as well. And uh, just for any of you that have tuned in, let me know what you think. Um, you know, hopefully it looks cool. I think the knobs are way better. I think that um, just overall, it's got a lot more of a modern, classy aesthetic. So I'm pretty proud of it. Still a long way to go. But again, this is definitely in the right direction. Uh, so thanks so much, everybody. Uh, please, uh, you know, if you'd like, hit, hit the like button. Um, subscribe to the channel for more content of this type. And uh, I'll be doing updates as often as I can on this one and um, trying to do other videos. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm a busy guy. I've got a kid trying to run a business, trying to start things. And obviously, this is just uh, takes time, y'all. So I appreciate everybody who has subscribed and liked the videos and tuned in. And uh, I will be seeing y'all in the next one. All right. See ya.